Adventures of the Shadow are on the air. Brought to you each week by the Blue Coal Dealers of America. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Today's shadow drama begins in just a moment. But first, let me remind you, there are still plenty of cool days and nights ahead. Well, I bet you'll be burning another full ton of coal before you let your fire go out. And when you order that extra ton, make sure that it's a ton of blue coal. Yes, now is your chance to try blue coal. Find out how steadily and evenly it burns, how comfortably warm and healthful it keeps your home. Get acquainted with blue coal now. Order a ton from your neighborhood dealer first thing in the morning. The shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. As the shadow, Cranston is gifted with hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Death on the Rail. Hello? Hello, Margot. Oh, Lamont, where are you? Well, I'm leaving for your place in a few minutes. I, uh... Uh, how's everything going out there in the country? Oh, fine, thanks. Well, that's good. I uh, still wish you'd get over the habit of going out to that lonely place, Margot, all by yourself. Oh, Lamont, I'm not alone. Katie, the new maid, is here. But she isn't any protection. Now, Lamont, we've had this all out before. I'm perfectly safe out here. Now, stop worrying about me and come on out. I'll wait dinner for you. Very well. But do be careful, please. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Silly. Never heard of such a thing. What could happen to me out here? Katie! Yes, ma'am? If you'll come over here, I'll show you where the garden is. Yes, Miss Margot. You see, this is it here, Katie. Yes, I see. Of course, it's still dead so early in the year, but soon you'll be able to get enough vegetables from it to feed us all summer long. Yes, ma'am. And look, over there is the flower garden. And right behind the house, there's a conservatory that you can... Katie... You're not listening to a word I'm saying. What's the matter? Well, I... Not a thing, ma'am. Well, what is it? Tell me, Katie. Well, it's the loneliness of this place. I... I wished I'd never come to work here, ma'am. Loneliness? Oh, now, Katie, you're just... I a... mean it, ma'am. You know, being a maid in a summer place sounded real nice when I was taking the job in the city. But now that I'm here, well, I... I wish I'd never come. Oh, Katie, you'll get over that feeling. Oh, no, I won't, ma'am. Why, last night, before you come here, Miss Lane, I heard so many noises and crickings and groanings <laughs> that I... Well, I, I thought I'd be jumping out of my skin. Oh, you're not afraid, are you, Katie? Frankly, ma'am? Well, yes, of course. I am. <laughs> and for good reason. Only last night, I come in the kitchen, and I seen a ghost. A that ghost? Was... Yes, ma'am, a ghost. Oh. It just stood there a-staring at me. Oh. Of course, when I come nearer, it turned out to be a mop standing in the corner, all covered with cobwebs. Oh, oh you can laugh, ma'am. But if I hadn't already got me full growth, believe me, it would have scared me out of the rest of it. <laughs> well, there are no ghosts around here, Katie, I can assure you. Come on, now, we'd better be getting inside. I think it's going to rain. Yes, ma'am. Now, uh, now, it's none of my business, I know, ma'am. But why were you after picking out a place so far from civilization like this? Why, we've been coming here for years, Katie. It's an ideal summer place. Five miles from the railroad, no neighbors nearby. And you call that ideal, ma'am? <laughs> well, Mother and Dad and all of us love it here. And you'll feel the same way by the time the summer's over. You wait and see. Well, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Come on, now. We'd better get the rest of our unpacking job done, Katie. Miss Margot. What? I... I didn't leave the front door open. Did you? Why, no. No, I didn't. I... Oh, wait, of course I did. I remember now. But I remember you're closing it, ma'am. That I do. You pulled it shut. Oh, now, just Katie, to... stop acting like a child. I think I left the door open. But if I didn't, what difference does it make? Why, there... 
There might be somebody in there. Oh, Miss Margot, it ain't right for two women to be all alone out here in this forsaken... Katie, stop that talk. And come inside and get to work. And I, believe me, there's nothing to be afraid of. Mr. Cranston will be here tonight. I'm expecting him any minute. So stop worrying. Now. Yes, ma'am. Now, the first thing to do is to get those books on the shelves. Mm. Here, will you take some of these, please, Katie? Yes, ma'am, I will. Oh, heaven save me. Nothing but mystery stories. Oh, reading about spooks in a place like this. That's certainly carrying coals to Newcastle. Oh, Katie, stop your mumbling. I don't know. I... You don't have to read them. Just put them on the shelf. Yes, ma'am. You know, I read a mystery story once. It was about a house just like this one. The family that lived in it was just like yours. They, they went to sleep one night and nobody heard from them for weeks. Finally, some folks broke the doors down and found them all butchered in their beds. Butchered? Yes, ma'am, butchered. And the worst of it was that... Saint above! Katie, what's wrong? I saw it. Now, don't tell me I didn't. I saw it. What? Somebody's face looking down at me over the banister. Oh, now, Katie, if you don't stop this business... But I I'll... saw a face, I tell you. Oh, Miss Margot, I, I got to get out of here. I got to. Listen to me, Katie. You didn't see anyone. Oh, There I... isn't a living soul within miles of this place. Now, stop your nonsense. There's nothing to be afraid of. Well, maybe you're right. And maybe you're not. Well, what's that? Obviously, someone is at the door. Well, I'm not going to open it. Katie. I know that there's somebody out there that I'm not going to want to see. It's going to be the same thing that's been showing itself around this house. Oh, and be I... quiet, Katie. I'll open oh, the door. Oh, don't you do it, Miss Lane. Don't you do Katie, it. Katie, please. One moment. Good evening. Good evening. What do you want? I hope you'll pardon this intrusion, but the storm is just about to break and I find myself without shelter. May I come in? Well, I... I'm a neighbor of yours. Portless is my name. I've just taken the house up the road. Oh, really? Which way up the road? Uh, to the right. The big white place with the stone gateway. Oh. Yes, I'm taking possession tomorrow. Thought I'd stroll about the countryside and get acquainted. How interesting. It's a beautiful house. Yes, yes, yes. Lovely solarium on the first floor. I like it. And that's a delightful swimming pool behind the garden. Yes, yes, delightful. Mr. Portless, that house happens to belong to my father's business partner, and he wouldn't part with it for anything. It has neither a solarium nor a swimming pool. Uh-oh. And besides, is it your custom to take a valise along with you for a little stroll through the countryside? I knew it. I knew it was something dreadful when I heard the knock. <laughs> well, I guess my little story didn't work. No, I guess it didn't. And now, Mr. Portland, Wait, if you don't uh, mind. Don't close the door, please. I only told you that because I wanted to avoid alarming you. Thought it would make things a good deal more simple if I appeared to be a neighbor, since I am forced to ask you to put me up for the night. To, to ask me to what? Let me explain. You see, there's been some trouble on the 745 train for New York. Engine coupling went wrong, and... Since I'm not a well man, I couldn't risk my health waiting around the drafty station at Pegram Junction. Now, 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 don't let him in, Miss Lane. Please, close the door. Please. So I inquired after the nearest habitation, was told there were no hotels, but that you were here opening your place for the seal. So I just walked over. I see. Didn't you find it rather a long walk for a sick man? Listen, young lady, I'm not going to stand here explaining myself any longer. No, I should say you're not. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, we're not closing that, that door until I'm inside. Let go of that door. Get out. I'm sorry to have to impose on your hospitality. Nevertheless, I must... Ah. Merciful saints, he's in. No, you needn't be alarmed. I'm not going to harm. I'm going to call for the police. I wouldn't advise that, young lady. Oh, no. No, don't call the police. He'd butcher us before we ever got to the phone. No, I'd hardly do that. But I would suggest that you do not reveal my presence here to anyone. Why have you come here? What do you want? A night's lodging, I told you. That's all. Your bedchambers are upstairs, I believe. Uh, yes, sir. Will you show me to one of them, please? Yes, sir. Hey, we've got to, ma'am. We've got to. Butcher us, he would. This way, sir. Thank you. Good night, young lady. I will be gone in the morning. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised if we all are. <laughs> Not very funny, that last remark. Hello? Is Lamont Cranston there? Why, no, but, but I expect him well, soon. tell him, please, when he comes to be very careful. Wh why? What do you mean? There are some desperate people in the neighborhood of your household. Stop at nothing. Who are they? I can't say any more just now, but please warn Mr. Cranston. Who is this? Hello? Hello, who is this? Oh, hung up. Miss 
Margot, what are we going to do? Now, please, Katie, this is no time for a stand. Oh, but I... Now, listen to me. I can't. Stand there by the foot of the stairs and yes, keep an ma'am. eye out for Mr. Porter. Yes. I'm going to put a call in to Mr. Cranston in New York. Oh, but what if he hears you do it? He'll butcher us, just like was in the story. Oh, Katie, please. I... Operator. Hello, operator. This is Pegram 316. Yes. I want to put a call in to New York City. The number is... Operator. Operator, you still there? Operator. Operator. Phone's gone dead. Hello? Hello? The door. The door's opening. Look, someone's coming in. What do you want? Who are you? Where is he? Who? Who are you looking for? You know who I'm looking for. He's here all right. I saw him come in, so there's no point in trying to lie to me. She's got a knife. She's carrying a knife in her hand. Shut up, you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Now, where is he gone? Where is he hiding? It's Mr. Portless. She's looking for that there Mr. Portless. That's who I want. Tell me where he is. You have no right to come into my house. Tell me where he is, I said. Upstairs. He, he went upstairs. Oh, trying to hide from me. Well, I'll show him. You show oh. me what, Eloise? There you are. I found you. He's got a gun. Please, please, both of you. You didn't expect this sort of a reception, did you, Eloise? You're not frightening me, Portless. I'm not afraid of that gun. Katie, go quickly for help. Stay where you are, all of you. (laughs) Still the big, brave man when you're confronted by women, aren't you, Portless? Put down that knife, Eloise. Oh, no. You will never learn discipline, will you? Give me that knife. I'll give it to you. In your heart. Oh! Saints above us. In his heart, she said. Please, please, I can't stand anymore. Knife, Eloise. I'm going to give you the count of three to drop it. If you still insist on crossing me, I'll kill you on the spot. All right, now. One. Oh, give it to him, miss. You wouldn't dare to kill me. I believe you know me better than that. Two. Give it to him, please. Stop it. Will you give me that knife? No. I've bent to your will for the last time. I've warned you. Yes, he's warned you. He'll do it. He'll kill you. Give him the knife. No. Three. Three. He did it. He killed her. Katie, come on. We've got to get out of here. Come on, Katie. Come back here, Miss Lee. Go ahead, Katie. Well, it certainly looks as if Margot and Katie have gotten themselves into hot water. And you know, there's only one thing worse than getting into hot water, and that is running out of hot water. But there's no danger of your running out of hot water... Not if your house is equipped with the new Blue Coal Deluxe Water Heater. Yes, thanks to the new 1941 Blue Coal Deluxe Water Heater, you can have more clean hot water than you can use all summer long and for less than five cents a day. And the temperature of that hot water is automatically regulated so that there's no sudden boiling or churning up of rust or sediment. Yes, this modern water heater gives you hot water that's really clean. You will find it a pleasure to get into hot water when you get it from the Blue Coal Deluxe Water Heater. It's another exclusive Blue Coal dealer service, brought to you by the same friends who have given you the Blue Coal Automatic Heat Regulator and the John Barclay Home Heating Service. Most dealers include this Blue Coal Deluxe Water Heater in their regular customer service. So phone your neighborhood dealer tomorrow, and when you talk to him, plan to order your supply of Blue Coal for next season. Remember, the summer months are the saving and profitable months in which to buy your next season supply of blue coal. Your dealer's name is listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the words blue coal. Now, here are Margot and Katie. That. that makes no difference. Come on. Yes, but, but, but look. Look back there. The, the lights are still on. Do you want him to catch up to us? Oh, sure. I'd be wanting that. I think not. Well, then come on. Miss Margot, there's a car coming down the road. Oh, yes. Yes, we've got to stop. Perhaps they can help us. Yes. Stand out here in the road with me, Katie. Oh, but what if they don't see us? They'll run us over. Oh, they'll see us. Wave your arm. Huh? Yes, I, I'm making like a windmill, I am. Yes. Hey, keep it up. Phew. Come on, Katie. Margo, 
Margo. Margo, what's wrong? Oh, it's you, Lamont. Thank heaven. Mr. Day. What are you doing out here in the rain, Margo? What's happened? Dreadful things, Lamont. Yes. The man came in. The woman was killed. What? And then we... What is she saying? Well, a strange man forced his way into the house and said he was staying the night. Yes, and then the woman came. The dead one. A dead woman came to the house? Oh, she wasn't dead when she came in. The man shot and killed her. Well, where is the man now? I think he's still in the oh. house. Get off of the road. Here comes oh. another Rocky Mobile. Look out, Margo. Oh. Oh, you fools. Oh. They saw us standing here. Look. Look, that car. It's slowing down in front of the house. Yes. Oh, good heavens. What? Look. They're throwing someone out of the car. Oh, shot. It's another killing. Come on, Margo. We must oh. get back to the house at once. Listen. Do you hear that, Margot? Yes. It seems to be coming from down there by the hedge. It was him. Him that was thrown from the car. I know it. Katie, don't make so much noise. We don't want Portland to hear us. It was him that was thrown from the car. I know it. Let's have a look at this fellow. There he is, Lamont, lying on the ground. Uh, yes. Yeah. Who is that? No. <sighs> don't be alarmed, old man. Take it easy. We're here to help you. Lamont, look at his shirt. It's covered with blood. You, yes. You're too late. Uh, nothing can help now. Take it easy, old man. Take it easy. We'll be the judge of that. No. Here. Let's have a look at no, you. No, no. Just leave me alone. Let me die. Oh, we can't do that. You've got to let us help you. Uh, just a minute now. Here. Give me a hand with him, Margo. Right. You must get him into the house. Into the house? Oh, merciful saints, the house is full of killers and dead ones now. Well, this man needs immediate attention. Yes, but what about that Mr. Martless? I mean, Mr. Portless. He's... Lamont will deal with him, uh, Katie. Portless. Did you say Portless? Yes. Yes, you know him. Portless is in that house. Yes. I've changed my mind. I want to go in there. I... Uh... Oh, Lamont. Is he dead? Just a minute. No. No, just fainted. Loss of blood, I imagine. Well, let's get him inside at once. All right. Katie, you go ahead and prepare some hot water and bandages. Ahead? Where? Into the house. Merciful saints. With a madman running loose in there, I should say not. You'd be carrying him in and me out. We'll go. all go in together, then. There. Wait a minute. I've got him now, Margot. You lead the way. All right. Well, Lamont, what's behind all this? Well, I'd like to be, Miss Margot. Way behind it. Oh, please, Katie. Well, Lamont? I don't know. This man here was evidently taken for a ride. He, in turn, knows the chap that just killed a woman in your house. It's, it's all linked up together somehow. Lamont, someone called for you a little while ago. Oh, who was it? Well, he didn't say, but he left a message that there were some desperate people in the neighborhood, and he warned you to be careful. Oh, I see. Lamont, we can't just walk into the house with Portless waiting there for us with a gun. What do we do? Call out to him. Tell him we're coming in. It's the only way. Call out to him? Oh, but that only gives him a chance. Be quiet, Katie. Mr. Portless! Mr. Portless, we're coming in. Why don't he answer? Open the door, Margot. Come on, do you think we should? Open the door. All right. I'll go ahead in. Oh, we're just putting our head in the lion's mouth. It's all right, Margot. There's no one here. Come ahead. All right, come on, Katie. As I said before, we're putting our head in the lion's mouth. Oh, Katie, will you stop? Get some uh, water, please, Margot. Some hot water and uh, get some cloth for bandages. Right. Oh! Katie, what's wrong? It's gone. It's gone. What? What are you talking about? The body of that woman. She was lying right here by the stairs. That's so, Lamont. Margot, are you positive that she was shot? Oh, Lamont, we heard the gun and we saw her fall. Yeah, we're dealing with spooks now, too. Nonsense. She's evidently been taken away by the man who shot her. Well, then where are they? Still in this house? Perhaps I'd better find out. Wait a minute, Lamont. Where are you going? Upstairs to have a look around. We won't be safe here until that man is found. Or oh, meanwhile, Margot, it might not be a bad idea if you call the police. Well, the phone is dead, Lamont. The wires were evidently cut. Oh, I see. Well, if, if anything goes wrong down here, call out to me. All right. But do be careful, Lamont. Don't worry. I will. <sighs> now look at the pickle we're in. All alone in a house with one dead, one dying, and one waiting to kill some more. Oh, Katie, I can't stand any more of your complaining. You can leave here right now if you wish. Leave? Leave? For where? Out into that storm with spooks chasing me all the way? Oh, no, not at all. If I must die, I'm going to die in comfort in a warm house. Oh. What was that? 
man seems to be regaining consciousness. Get me some water, Katie, please. Oh. Well, all right, but I'm telling you there's nothing but a pack of butchers. Where? Where am I? You're in safe hands. Just relax, please. Oh, yes, you found me. You're the one. Yes. Brought me into the house. Yes, that's right. Wait. He said Portlet was in this house. Yes, he was. Where is he? Where is he now? I don't know. Uh, find him. Find him. Wait. They like the train. What? What are you saying? Portlet and his gang dynamited the train off the track. People killed. Many people. Good heavens, when did this happen? 7.45 train. Uh, tonight. Why did they do it? Money. I have the train of money in the mail car. How do you know all this? I was stranded with a gang. Supposed to report them. Then you're with the police. Yes, but they found out. Took me for a ride. They left me for dead. Then you're looking right. for Portland to turn him over to the authorities. Yes, that's right. Oh. I... Lamont, did you see any sign of him? No, but I found this black police. That's the bag he was carrying. I thought so. Lamont, this man has regained consciousness, and he's just told me all about Portland. He and his gang have wrecked and robbed a train. What? That bag. That bag contains the money they stole. Are you sure? Yes, yes, give it to me. I'll take oh. that bag, gentlemen. Huh? I hope this gun is sufficiently impressive to stop any of you from attempting to interfere with me. I wish to be alone with the gentleman that you brought into the house. Huh? Both of you go into that room. No. No, don't leave me alone with him. I'm locking the door of that room. Please. If either of you attempt to get out, I'm warning you, I'll shoot and shoot to kill. Lamont, what are we going to do? He'll kill that poor man. I know he will. But we're locked in this room, Margot. The well, locked doors have never bothered you before, Lamont. I know, but... But you must do something, Lamont. What's the matter with you? What do you mean? You let him lock us in this room without even putting up any sort of a fight. Well, he had a gun, Margot. A gun has never made any difference to the shadow. Well, this may not be a case with a shadow, Margot. This may not be a... With a man's life at stake? Well, Mon, what's come over you? If you hadn't come to this place alone, none of this would have happened. Oh, I know. I realize now that you were right about that. But, and I'll never do it again, but... Please, the shadow can save that man. You must do it, Lamont. But how can I get out of this room? The window. Oh, Through that window, then in the kitchen no, door. Please, please, don't, Portland. No. Listen, he's torturing him. Go on, Lamont. Go at once. I've spent enough time with you, no doubt. Oh. Now you're going to pay for double crossing me. Oh, no. Leave me alone. Why hasn't the shadow gotten in there? Keep away from me. Portland, give away! <laughs> oh, the shadow is there. What was that? Where did that voice come from? It appears that I arrived here just in time, eh, Mr. Portless? Where are you? Who are you? I believe that you might know me as the shadow. Not the shadow! I see that the name is a familiar one to you. Then you must know why I'm here. I'm not going to interfere with my plan, Shadow. Put down that gun, Portless. Oh, good heavens. You don't frighten me. Put down that gun, I say. Had a boy, Lamont. Let me warn you, Shadow. You may be invisible, but I have a very keen sense of hearing. Very keen indeed. I know exactly where you are right now by the sound of your voice. That'll be of no help to you, Portless. Why, at the contrary, you're made of flesh and blood, aren't you? A well-directed bullet will find its mark in your body, whether you remain invisible or not. Brothers have tried your little scheme, Portless, but they've failed. Just as you will fail. Well, I'm superior to others. Listen to him. I can disprove that. How? By taking away your gun. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, oh Lamont. How do you like Lamont. that, Mr. Shadow? I told you you'd let your match. Oh, no. What's happened? Lamont. You see this? No. That's all that remains of the shadow. No. <laughs> She's coming too now. Margot. Margot. Are you all right, darling? Oh. Well, Lamont. Easy now, easy. But I thought... Now, Miss Lane, just take this glass of water. Oh. That's it. Oh, she's falling. Portos. What are you doing here? Nordoff, you're walking around. You're all well again. Yes, Margot. They're, they're perfectly all right. Well, I'm afraid you had too much of a shock, Miss Lane. Oh, this is fine. Now enters the mystery woman who was shot. That's all I needed. <laughs> Not really shot. Wait a minute. I, I don't understand. Well, uh, 
All this was a little hoax of mine, Margot. I, I intended it to be a lesson to you for remaining here alone, but it... <laughs> I guess my little game backfired. Uh, that's putting it mildly. And incidentally, what happened to the shadow? I heard his voice in the other room, and then the shots had killed him. <laughs> I guess Mr. Cranston's pretending to be the shadow was a little too much for you, Miss Lane. <laughs> yes, I guess it was. I'm afraid I'm still in the dark. Well, you see, we were hired as actors, but he certainly out-trooped us with that performance as the shadow. <laughs> Indeed he did. If he'd been able to make himself invisible, he'd have been better than the original. Oh, Mr. Cranston, your voice was better than his. <laughs> I'm really not that good. Oh, oh yes, you were. Oh, yes, whoa, were. whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute now. As I see it, Lamont, you impersonated the shadow as the final act in your little comedy. Guilty, Margot. Uh-huh. And the only thing you couldn't do was make yourself invisible? Well, I, I couldn't very well do that. You can understand, Margot. Oh, yes. Yes, I can understand, Lamont. And as for your three jovial chums, they're just hired actors. Good ones, too. Local managers, please note. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, from now on, Mr. Cranston, if you don't mind, I'll take all my performances behind the footlights. <laughs> the shadow will return in just a moment. But first, here's John Barclay, America's home heating expert. Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken Robertson. Good evening, friends. Well, it won't be long now before you'll be giving your heating plant a well-deserved vacation. That's why I'm recommending the John Barclay Blue Seal Summer Conditioning Service. It's an all-out, all-over electrical vacuum cleaning and furnace inspection service featured exclusively by the Blue Coal Dealers of America. It gives you ten jobs for the price of one. Capable John Barclay trained serviceman goes over your heating plant from ash pit to chimney. He completely removes all soot and dirt from the inside of your furnace. He seals up all leaks around the joints and doors. He checks and cleans gauges, inspects and adjusts dampers, and drains and refills boilers if necessary. Yes, this John Barclay Blue Seal Summer Conditioning Service is more than just a brush over for your furnace. It puts your heating plant in prime working condition, ready for use next fall. And remember, a clean furnace will save you money and give you greater comfort all next winter. So take my advice and plan now to have your furnace thoroughly cleaned and conditioned by your neighborhood blue coal dealer. Just give him a call in the morning. I thank you. Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, the Blue Coal Dealers of America bring you an adventure of the shadow so thrilling that I can't attempt to describe it. You'll have to hear it. So be sure to listen. And be sure to phone your friendly Blue Coal Dealer for greater heating comfort at less cost. This is Ken Roberts wishing you a happy Easter from the Blue Coal Dealers of America. America.